how the mind truly learns. A private discourse. I have decided to share a few insights with you regarding the truth about human learning. If you choose to imbibe it, do so. If you agree or disagree, you will not have truly heard. My ways are unorthodox, as any true way must be. For things must be done not according to tenets of instruction. They must be done according to the way in which the mind can be captured, engaged, and made to imbibe the training. And in so doing, willingly commit the whole of its powers to creating a masterpiece of the craft at hand. I will be using the word teacher in the purest sense. I do not mean school teacher, for I find schools to be beneath the glory of human beings. Let us begin. The teacher. Teaching begins with the teacher, not his methodologies, but his intent. What the teacher is hungry for, what he is inspired by, what he truly seeks. For this will inform his every action. Teaching. In order to teach a human a particular skill, the skill cannot be taught head-on. It must be taught obliquely. The skill cannot be brought to the student. The student must be enticed toward the skill. Why is this so? Because if the skill is brought to the student, the mind becomes complacent. The moment a skill or a teaching is brought to the student, the mind will lean back in its chair and expect another teaching. And in, and in doing so, it will imbibe very little. A few years back, a sports psychologist asked me to help him with his teaching. He was aghast at the fact that one of his PGA Tour players said to him, What do you have for me today? This is an example of a mind that has become complacent. Teaching is like a string that links teacher and student. This string must always remain taut. For the moment the string becomes lax, even if the teaching continues, the learning will come to a halt. Understand this truth. The mind of the student can never be allowed to become complacent. The teacher's mind. The teacher who needs his student to succeed will fail. For this need will undermine the purity of his teaching. So that performance truths about teaching. The teacher must sneak up on the mind of the student, for if the mind sees him coming, it will erect a barrier. The teacher must observe the student's responses, verbal and otherwise, for these will reveal the true desires of the student, and they will inform the path that the teacher must take. The single most ineffective method of having a human being do anything is to simply tell him to do it. Teaching is like a connect-the-dots puzzle. But the space between each dot is stretched seven miles wide so as to allow the student the space and the freedom to create his own unique and instinctive solution. What the master teacher craves most is not, to, is not to have the student imbibe the teaching. What he craves most is to stand in awe before a solution that this particular human, as the only one of his kind in the entire world, 
was made to produce. A skill that can be memorized and performed by rote is a skill that will provide almost no benefit for a human being. A teacher who brings a lesson plan, a PowerPoint presentation, a lecture, or a briefcase has brought with him the building, bro- building blocks of a prison. All true things arise spontaneously. They arise from a mysterious place that is beyond words. True learning is a relationship between the desperation in the student's heart and the teaching that sits before him. True teaching is not released fully formed. It is like a plutonium bomb that sits before the student, waiting to release the majesty of its secrets. But it can only be opened by a hand that is pure, a fingerprint that conveys a true sincerity and a maniacal desire. A true teacher must be passionate about dispassion. For any form of reliance, hope, or need that he holds within him will undermine his efforts. The teacher who instructs is not a teacher. The teacher who has a five-step method will turn the student into a mule. Before one becomes a true teacher, he will have exiled himself into a monk-like existence in order to come face to face with the mercurial majesty of his mind. For in understanding his own mind, he will have understood the mind of all human beings. Namaste. For those who wish to apply for the private discourses, they may do so at www.kapilgupta.com. MD.com